In famously disturbing images like this, the surrealist painter Salvador Dali set out to explore the darkest regions of the human subconscious. It is perhaps with Dali, wrote André Breton, that for the first time the windows of the mind are opened fully wide. Perhaps the imagination is on the verge of recovering its right. Painted in 1936, the burning giraffe hangs today in the Kunstmuseum in Baal. And anyone seeing the original for the first time will probably be amazed by how small it is. Dali's human stick insects seem confined in a tiny space. But in the world of bad dreams, space becomes deceptive. Human beings mutate, their bodies grow dark and bony. Their hands grope hopelessly in space, as if plucking an invisible harp. Like a zoologist studying a diseased specimen, the painter examines minutely every detail of the woman's emaciated body. Her close-fitting dress hides nothing. Her body takes on the dead grey colour of the night sky, and a horrible twilight fills the picture. The only difference between me and a madman, wrote Dali of his worrying imagery, is that I am not mad. Dali's astonishing imagination conjures up a world in which nothing makes sense. The half-open drawers protruding eerily from the woman's body are empty. Have they been ransacked? What could they have contained? The horrible protuberances growing out of the woman's spine are supported by a system of crutches. Behind her, an echo of herself, another of Dali's mysterious female monsters, stands frozen like a statue on the plain. Branches grow from the head of this modern Daphne. As always in Dali's art, civilization seems to have reached the stage of decay and putrefaction. On her wrist, a few sparkling baubles of jewellery exaggerate rather than alleviate the misery. In her hand, a blood-red scarf held aloft, like a victory prize. Further back in the landscape, the burning giraffe of the title is another of the curious inhabitants of this spooky wilderness. The flames cast flickering shadows which make the already strange land appear even stranger and more barren. The small ghostly figure next to the giraffe appears not to notice what is going on around him. He stares out of the picture, casting a long shadow. The giraffe, too, seems not to have felt the flames which envelop it. Like everyone else in the picture, the giraffe endures its pain in silence and with a terrible resignation. The landscape, too, seems to have lost all hope, all vegetation. This infertile land appears time and time again in Dali's paintings. In fact, it is based on the real surroundings in which Dali was brought up in northern Spain. The arid plain of Ampiordas, the beach of Las Rosas, the bay of Port Ligat. In 1930, having made his mark with the Surrealists in Paris, Dali settled in the old fishing village of Port Ligat, with its strange architecture and curious surrounding rock formations. There was something haunting about Port Ligat. The bizarre rock formations of nearby Cape Creus had fascinated the artist since his childhood. In 1937, Dali remembered the curious rocks of Cape Creus and transformed them into a giant head supported on crutches in a picture called Sleep. As a painter, Dali was a master of psychological suspense. He studied the case histories of mental patients and the dream interpretations of Freud. In order to make sleep possible, he wrote of this picture, a system of crutches is necessary, which are in psychological equilibrium. 
If a single one fails, wakefulness follows immediately. The crutch reappears in the Baal picture in its familiar supporting role. As a child, Dali had had erotic fantasies involving crutches, and they became one of his favorite fetishes, a central obsession in his paintings, particularly during the 30s, when the crutch reappears constantly in different guises. Often, as in the Baal picture, it is linked with ugly penis-like protrusions sticking out of the decaying body. All the surrealists were interested in delving into the human mind. But Dali goes further. His pictures seem to speak, as William Rubin pointed out, of exaggerated states of castration, putrefaction, voyeurism, onanism, coprophilia, and impotence. Like all Dali's work, The Burning Giraffe seems to be set in a terrifying silence. Music has died, but the instruments live on. The figure in the foreground forms the outline of a harp. The invisible harp was another motif that had appeared earlier in a painting from 1934. Again, the nocturnal female figure is supported by crutches. And for the first time, Dali paints a drawer protruding from her face. Two years later, the mysterious drawers reappear in the upper half of a female nude. Dali claimed the image was inspired by a conversation he overheard in London on the subject of a chest of drawers. Dali understood chest to mean breast. It was a natural Freudian pun. Dali spoke of the ghostly sex appeal of his disassembled women but he also saw his pictures as allegories of psychoanalysis. With what satisfaction, he wrote, we perceive the countless narcissistic odors which issue from each of our drawers or secret compartments. There is yet another secret layer of meaning to this worrying picture. The burning giraffe was painted at the start of the Spanish Civil War. In 1938, in the painting Spain, Dali created an allegory of the Civil War. The tangled battleground takes the place of the head in yet another female figure. A pure phenomenon of natural history is Dali's famous cynical description of the Civil War. He himself supported Franco and the fascists, and in 1938 he was expelled for it from the surrealist ranks. The difference between me and the Surrealists, he retorted, is that I am a Surrealist. The red scarf returns to be waved triumphantly at the burning giraffe, just as in the Spanish bullring, the taunting matador waves his red cloak at the tormented bull. Dali called his giraffe the masculine cosmic monster of the apocalypse. Although expelled from the surrealist movement, Dali in disturbing creations like this seems the ultimate surrealist.